Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make turntable animations like this and how you can set the ground to have a little shadow so you can have it in the corner of your screen like this. So let's get started, I've got a model that I did for Sculpt January, I've got three lights in the scene just to light the model. My camera's set up there but it's not in a very good position. What you'll need is a circle and an empty. So Shift A to add a circle so under curve circle and it's coming fairly small so I'll scale that right up and shift A to add an empty and plane axis it doesn't really matter what sort of empty but plane axis is fine and scale that up so you can see it so the empty will act as my target and the circle will act as the path for the camera so the first thing you do is grab your camera and go to top view and position the camera at the beginning frame of the circle so let's grab that and put it there and also let's go to front view and grab it so it goes exactly at the beginning part of the circle. Make sure you do that before you parent it. I'm going to bring up a new window for the timeline and we'll use that in a minute. So the timeline, to bring up new windows you grab the corners there and pull them and the timeline is at the top in the middle here. Okay so nothing's happening yet we need to parent the camera to the circle. So Select the camera first, circle second, so that's the active object, and press Control P for parent, and we do follow path. Okay, it does move slightly, that's quite irritating at times, but it will follow the circle all the way around, so that's fine. Next we need to set the camera's focal element to be the empty. In 2.79 you would click the camera, click the empty, and press Control T and track to constraint, and that would all work, but that's not available in 2.8 yet, so we have to go to the constraints tab just here, add constraint and it's track two. We choose the empty in here, you can also use the pipette that's there and choose the empty. And I've made a mistake there, I've selected the circle as well, so I'll just get rid of that and try and select the camera on its own. And track two once again, and this time I'll pick the empty with my picker, there's the empty, and the camera points downwards, you just change it to minus Z and Y. Now I would try and explain that, but it just works and it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Now when I move the empty, let's grab that in the Z and move it to the middle of our character, you can see the camera moving with it. And let's move the circle up as well, grab it in the Z axis. And when I scrub along my timeline with right click and drag, you can see it goes all the way around. And at the moment it's 100 frames, you can see it stop at 100 frames. If you want to change that, you click on the circle and go to the circle properties and under path animation, just here, you can change that to, let's say, 250, which is the normal length of our scene. And it's actually quite a good length of time to give a good circular animation. Then we would go to the render tabs, and of course set up EV for rendering. But the main thing is your output. So to render your animation, you've got the start frame, end frame there, obviously resolution size. But the main thing for you will be the output do not let it go to the temp folder, give it an actual location where you want it to go, and then render. Now that will work for Eevee. If we want a little shadow on the floor, we can only do that in cycles. So if I press Shift A and add a mesh in the plane, let's scale that up, and Alt G will remove any transforms. Let's scale that up a bit more to about there, and let's go to front view and make sure our model is standing on our plane. I'm gonna switch across to cycles, under this tab here and change to cycles and it updates and I'd need to change my light settings a bit and things but that doesn't matter for now. With the plane selected I need to make it what's called a shadow catcher. You go under the object data which is just here and down to cycles settings and under ray visibility click shadow catcher and now you can see this has changed and we just get the shadows. The very last thing to do is go to your render settings we're in cycles but we have to go to where it says film and click on transparency. Tick that and now it will be completely transparent when you render. There is just one last step though. You must go to your render output. It's usually set by default but you must make sure it's RGBA for alpha so it's got an alpha channel. Then you'll be able to take it into an editing program and render it out and put in any background you like or put it over the top of your videos when you're explaining and have it in the corner like I have here. So if you've got any questions, do comment below and I'll get back to you. And if you've got any questions, you might want to look at the comments in case I've answered your question already. So that's all for me. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.